Shift the atmosphere, God. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, fall down in this place, God. God. Because there is no God like you, Jesus. Over me. 
moving, moving, it's moving, moving, moving. It's moving. moving. Your strength moving. is moving. moving. Your power moving. is moving. moving. Your anointing moving. 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 power moving. is moving. moving. Your strength moving. is moving. moving. It's moving. moving. It's 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 moving.
try Jesus <laughs> cause he's alright fickle God 
He is the one and true living God. Hallelujah. That's who we serve. We serve the God that answers by fire. And whatever you stand in the need of, all you got to do is take it to the Lord in prayer. And then once you pray, put a praise on it. And say, God, I know you got it. God, I know you can handle it. God, I believe you for my turnaround. God, I believe you for my healing. See, y'all says I want to get cute, but it ain't time to be cute no more. It's time to give God an undignified praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We ain't cupcaking this thing no more. This is where you're free to get delivered. You're free to get healed. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. And the work that he started in you, he's going to complete it. So do not be weary and well-doing. Because your harvest is coming, baby. If you faint not, your harvest is on the way if you faint not. So you got to let the God know that he will and you trust him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, God. We thank you. We thank you, Lord. We bless you. Because, God, it's not our emotions, but it's our spirit that's shifting. In the name of Jesus, God. God, we come into, we enter your courts with thanksgiving. And then we enter into your courts with praise. And, God, forgive us when we have forsaken our praise unto you. Because we've allowed the world to dictate to us how we should ought to worship you, God. But we, we are on one accord. Here we are on one accord to worship you in spirit and in truth. We come transparent with an open heart because we know your word said that you will. And the word says that God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he shall repent. So God, every promise that you've spoken over our lives in the name of Jesus, we believe it on today, God. And even in the areas of our unbelief, help our unbelief in the name of Jesus. So God, we're here to see your faith manifest your glory in your house on today, God. Shift this atmosphere that we go to another dimension of worshiping you, God. God, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So we bind up in the mighty name of Jesus. We bind up every hindering spirit. We bind up every schizophrenia spirit. We bind up every psychological wars in our minds, God. We bind up every worry, every care, and every concern, and we loose your glory. We loose your glory in this atmosphere. So God, speak to us in the mighty name of Jesus that this is the time of worship, of transformation because you want to take us higher. So we trust the process and we trust you because we know that you can and you will. So we give our will over to you because we know that you will. Arrest this atmosphere. Lord God, I pray you will speak to everyone on Facebook Live, the conference call, everyone that is physically here, God, that we get a revelation of your word and go deeper in a surety that you will, God. Use your man servant to preach the word. Use him as the vessel in this hour to preach the word of, preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. That we keep moving forward. And we forever give you all the honor, glory, and the praise. It's in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth 
Let those who believe that he will say amen. Come on and give him a praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may take your seat in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. And welcome to the Heights Ministries where we are equipping kingdom citizens. And we are so glad to see everyone, whether physically on the conference call line or on Facebook Live. We welcome you at the Heights Ministries. Amen. And so we're going to go ahead and transition into the part of the service where we all can participate in the act of worship and giving. Amen. So there's three ways to give. And I believe they are on the information is on the screen for those who are on Facebook Live to give because we need to sow into the kingdom of God because there is work to do for the kingdom. Amen. And we want to be a blessing to those who are in need. We want to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ to the ends of the earth. So we're going to give. You can give by cash app. You can give by give la fly or you can physically give. Amen. So let us uh, bless the offering. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the resources to sow into your kingdom, for you are our source, God. And so we ask, Father God, that you, Father God, give us the ability and the willingness to sow where we want to go, God. So we go with tithes and offering, Father God. We sow seeds, Father God, and we know that this is fertile ground. So God, we pray that you use this giving, Father, the monetary gifts for advancement of your kingdom, from reaching the lost, for the widows and the orphan, for the homeless, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, for resources for the kingdom of God to bless your people and for people to know that Jesus Christ lives and he is Lord. So bless this offering some 30, some 60, 100 fold, and we'll forever give you all the glory and the praise. It's in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth we pray. Amen. Amen.
wasn't good. You were still good. Help me say. When I wasn't good. You were still good. good. When I wasn't good. I wasn't good. You were still good. You were still good. I wasn't good. I wasn't good. You were still good. Don't stop, get it, get it. If he's been good to you, come on and give him some praise. And listen, don't, don't do it because I said it. Do it because you're thinking of a time that God was good to you. And you didn't deserve it. Come on now. Oh, see, y'all trying to be cute. Come on, Facebook. Come on, YouTube. I need to talk to some folk who know they ain't always been good. I need to talk to some folk who always ain't do everything right. I want to talk to some folk. I'm not talking about 
when you was in the world. I'm talking about you right now as a believer and still didn't do it right. Still didn't act right. Still had a bad attitude. Still had a foul mouth. But God was good to you anyhow. Come on and give them some. Come on Facebook, chat back at me. Say you just don't know how good God's been to me. <laughs> in spite of me. See, I think at times, I think at times it's hard for us to acknowledge the goodness of God because too many of us have an attitude like we should be blessed. Oh, see, y'all don't want to be real here. Uh, too many of us, come on Facebook, too many of us feel, feel like, yeah, we, we ought to be blessed, but no, 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 that, that's not, that's not the real, that's not real. The reason we are blessed is because God loved us beyond us. Because <laughs> some of us should be dead. Oh, see, y'all quiet now. <laughs> some of us should not still be here. Some of us should be locked up and locked away and thrown away the key. Y'all see, I'm talking to some folks who knows what it's like to be bad. I know I, some of us, some of us, some of us shouldn't have woke up this morning because of the way we've been acting or the way we act. But because he is good and because he's been not just good, but so good, is the reason why I can just say thank you. For he continues to give me a chance time after time he keeps making a way and so every once in a while allow me an opportunity to say God thank you for being so good <laughs> hmm. hmm. Old saints were saying, so see y'all don't want to help me. Mm -hmm. So come on, can we go back? Can we go back? Come on, can we go back? Can we go back? I'm, we get ready to preach in a minute. Come on, Facebook. Come on, come you on. Come on. come on. I want everybody, everybody. Come on, everybody. Come on, come on. Let's go old school. Let's go old school.
for being so good. God, you've been so good that I really can't keep it to myself. Matter of fact, if I had 10,000 tongues, I couldn't brag on you enough. And so this morning, God, thank you for being good. That even when it was hard, even when it was difficult, even when it was a struggle, God, you've been good. And I'm able to acknowledge your goodness this morning. God, thank you for being good. And now, God, we need your, we need your goodness one more time. Matter of fact, we need your goodness to go even to a higher place and be good to us right now, God, by preaching a good word. Take the lips of clay of a pastor, form them and fashion them to speak. Only what thus says the Lord, create in me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit inside of me so none of me hinders what you desire to do in the life of your people. God, you've been so good. So now, God, be a good God and save someone who's lost. Be a good God. Reclaim a backside. Be a good God. Add more labor to the harvest. Be a good God. <laughs> and give somebody encouragement and hope. God, you've been so good. And we are willing to acknowledge your goodness this morning. And so, God, thank you. Come on, put your hands together. Stop pity patting my God. Stop pity patting my God. Stop playing with my God. Stop. Come on and however you need to do it, give him some glory. However you need to do it, give him some praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, Facebook, hallelujah. Turn with me quickly to your in your Bibles, your cell phone apps, or your tablet apps, if you would. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. Hmm. I sense a real sweet spirit in this place. And even where you are, Facebook and YouTube, in the conference call line, we thank you for joining us this morning. Even while we turn Hebrews chapter 12 verses 1 through 3 uh, I'll be reading it out of the amplified version of the Bible this morning even while we do so I just want to acknowledge that one I ask that you would pray for Lady Audra Mitchell Atkinson this morning who is preaching the word of God at Trinity Park Baptist Church in the stint of Pastor Eric R. Miller Amen. We, we lift her up. Amen. At 11 a.m. Amen. As service starts and she will be delivering the word of God. We're thankful uh, for how God is using her. We're also ever so thankful for in your giving. This week the Lord has blessed us to be able to give 30 full Thanksgiving meals. Hallelujah. Come on Facebook. Come on and give us some clapping hands. We'll be able to feed 30 full meals to families in our area and it is because of your faithfulness in your tithes and your offerings and we thank God for you and for other organizations that has sown into us to be able to give uh, to those families in need but then also we were blessed by the Carolina Ministries and North Carolina and South Carolina Churches of God the youth convention they assembled 130 care packages to give to those who are homeless, filled with washcloths, sanitizers, amen, uh, other, other, other things that in, in one of our ministries and one of our ministers who have a ministry that was birthed in her called These Streets Ministries by our minister, Drusilla Steele, amen, is going to go out and distribute those uh, at the homeless uh, the hotel where they have are uh, housing them. So we're ever so thankful that your giving allows us as a ministry to reach beyond the walls and listen and keep our momentum going. Amen. 
Amen. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. And I would be remiss if I would not acknowledge her. Uh, she is one of our members all the way from Dallas, Texas. Amen. Houston, Texas. She's living in Houston now. Amen. And she continues to watch each week. And she's in town this week. Amen. Sister Ashley. Amen. Come on. Yeah, that's right. That's right. She's spreading the word. The heights all the ring in Houston, Texas. Amen. And she came home this week and said, Pastor, I want to come to church. Amen. And it's good to have her here. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 through 3, the amplified version of the Bible uh, reads as follows. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses who by faith have testified to the truth of God's absolute faithfulness, stripping off every unnecessary weight and the sin which so easily and cleverly entangles us. Let us run with endurance and active persistence the race that is set before us. Looking away from all that will distract us and focusing our eyes on Jesus who is the author and perfecter of faith. The first incentive of our belief in the one who brings our faith to maturity. Who for the joy of accomplishing the goal set before him endured the cross, disregarding the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God, revealing his deity, his authority, and the completion of his work. Just consider and meditate on him who endured from sinners such bitter hostility against himself. Consider it all in comparison with your trials so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Is that what your Bible reads? Amen. For those who are here physically, you may take your seat. Uh, Facebook and YouTube, catch this, catch this. Verse number two, the A portion of it. Verse number two, the A portion of it. Looking away from all that will distract us and focusing our eyes on Jesus, who is the author and perfecter of our faith. First, the first incentive of our belief in the one who brings our faith to maturity. My God. Wow. Uh, this morning, I want to preach that the Holy Spirit shall lead and shall guide as the people of God shall encourage me and as those who are with us virtually shall interact with me. I want to preach from this subject matter. Don't stop now. Oh, my God. Come on, come on Facebook. Type it in the chat. Don't stop now. You ought to look at somebody and say, I'm not stopping. I'm not stopping. I've got too much momentum going. I'm not, I'm not stopping. I'm not stopping. Don't stop now. Maintaining your momentum. We've been dealing with this whole series, Don't Lose Your Momentum. And in the midst of it, each week, God has blessed us with and encouraged us to keep our momentum. This fourth and last installment of this series, Sister Felicia, has challenged us to continue with the momentum, the positive momentum we have been building in the good things that God has charged us to. We've been building momentum. We've been moving in the right direction. We are going Going forward, we are we are we are we are operating in the will of God. We are moving in our God purpose, and so in the midst of that, we are building spiritual momentum. And you have heard me say on last week, the spiritual momentum, according, according to the Holman Bible Dictionary, says it is a spiritual positive energy. It is, it is spiritual energy that, that is in a sense that it seems as if I am in a good season. Things seem to be going well. Things seem to be moving in the right direction for me. I mean, it seems as if my momentum everywhere I place my feet, Reverend David, seems to be I am blessed. Everything that I put my hands to seems to be go, it seems to be working. And it's not to say that at times, mother, that it isn't, it isn't troubling or it isn't a struggle. But because I have 
built up momentum, I continue to push forward. I continue to, to move forward. It's not to say, Reverend Oscar, that at times I don't have distractions. It doesn't mean that at times, uh, that, that at times I, I'm not seemingly going through stuff. But when I understand momentum, I understand it to be defined by the merriam Webster Dictionary as a strength or force gained by motion or by a series of events. In essence, I have been using the whole analogy of, in essence, a wagon that starts at the top of the hill and it is let loose and as it goes down the hill, it is gaining momentum, it is picking up speed, it is gaining force, it is moving with a sense of power and that even when it gets into the valley, because of the momentum it had at the top of the hill, it has enough momentum to go through the valley and continue to go forth. And in the midst of it, I also used a snowball as an analogy or an example that you can have a small little snowball and you put it at the top of the hill, but when you push it down the hill, it gains momentum, but also it gains size. And in that size, it gains energy so that the snowball is not large enough to go through obstacles or barriers that is set before us. And in essence, the same thing happens in life for us. We have momentum and in those times it seems as if no matter what comes up against us, we have the momentum to press through. Matter of fact, Paul describes it as pressing towards the more of the high calling which is in Christ Jesus. And as believers we need to understand that in essence we're going to go through some stuff but going through stuff don't have to stop me from moving in my momentum. Okay, I need to talk to some folk right now who is either making up their mind that I'm going to I'm going to create a positive energy, a synergy, a momentum, or I'm walking in that momentum right now, or you know what? I'm just hearing from God, and as I hear from God, he's, he's building my momentum. And in the essence that we need to realize and understand that as you move in momentum, there's always going to be a threat to your momentum. <laughs> okay, okay, that's that's the reason why this morning we're talking about don't stop now because there's always going to be a threat, an obstacle, or a barrier to your momentum. <laughs> See, I know that's kind of difficult for us because as, as believers and as Christians, uh, for some reason or another, we've bought into a ideology or a, 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 a philosophy or a, or a or idea of, 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 of understanding that, you know, because I know Jesus... And because I got Jesus, and because he's so good, you know, I, I'm not going to go through stuff. And, 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 and you know, uh, 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 that my life's going to be easy. Uh, we've been given uh, some words or some instructions or some preaching or teaching that has made us think that just because we know Jesus, that you know everything going to be all right. Uh, yeah, it's going to be all right, but you're going to go through hell before you get all right. Okay, I'm not cussing. I'm just telling you the truth. Uh, matter of fact, I'm just saying what some of y'all feel right now. Uh, I, I've got some positive momentum, but I'm going through hell and high water to continue to go forward. The, the have momentum does not mean that I won't go through something. There's going to be barriers. You matter of fact, you've heard me say, Queen B, in the midst of this sermon series, that at times the more you operate in the will of God, the more you move in the purpose of God, the more you're looking to accomplish God's vision and God's purpose in your life is the reason why you're going to have some threats against your momentum. Uh, see, when you're not doing right and when you're not living right uh, and when you're not doing nothing and when you're lazy and lackadaisical uh, oh see y'all quiet now cause y'all y'all looking at me like is he talking about me I wish I was on Facebook this morning so I couldn't see he could, so he couldn't see my eyes uh, but, uh, but, but, uh, but you know when you're, when you're not doing it when you're not a threat to the enemy's kingdom when he feels like he can manipulate you to continue to walk in sin or to go backwards or when he feels that he's the one, the enemy, the devil is the one that controls your momentum. He don't have to bother you. 
Oh, my God. Uh, he can leave you alone because you're already doing what he wants you to do, which is nothing. Y'all quiet now. Uh, you're already sitting down. You're already whining. You're already murmuring. Oh, see, see, quite like the children of Israel, you know, they could not get past. Some of them could not get past their mindset that we were better off in Egypt. Uh, they couldn't get past at times murmuring and complaining. Here it is that God just delivered you out of 400 years of bondage. Here it is that God just brought you through the Red Sea. Here it is that God just was with you in the midst of the wilderness. You got all the Egyptians' gold and jewelry. You got everything you need. Your clothes ain't wearing out. God is a pillar of fire by day, a pillar of cloud by night watching over you. When you get to the Jordan, even though it is at flood stage, God opens it up, moves you into the promised land just like he said he would. But some of y'all still talk talking about we were better off in Egypt well baby you might have been but I've got positive momentum huh? and I'm going into the promised land flowing with milk and honey and listen you ought to look at somebody real quick on Facebook you ought to chat this I'm getting ready to leave some complaining murmuring huh? a silly folk behind because I'm not stopping now and I'm not dealing with this kind of foolishness uh, see, see, Brittany, the problem is y'all want to take everybody with you. Everybody not meant to go with you. Okay, see, some, some folk are meant to die in the wilderness. Some folk uh, was meant, oh, see, y'all trying to be cute. Uh, I'm trying to be real. In, in essence, there's always going to be a threat uh, to your momentum. Catch this. And, and so, in essence, when we think about momentum and moving forward, sometimes it's the enemy, but sometimes it's the enemy in me. <laughs> okay. Ah, uh, see y'all. Okay, see y'all, see y'all, see y'all don't like me when I preach like this because I get all in your business and your biscuits. Catch this. Sometimes, yes, it is the enemy manipulating me and uh, it's a threat uh, to uh, my momentum. But then sometimes, uh, Mother Christine, it's me. Okay, it's my low self-esteem. It's my doubt. It is because I know what I used to be and how I used to mess up stuff and it's hard for me to grasp and believe uh, that God can use me like this. It's hard at times because of the difficulty of my life uh, and because of where I have been. Sometimes it's hard for me to walk in momentum that is positive and so because I'm afraid that I'm going to mess it up. And I'm talking to anybody on Facebook and YouTube because they got an attitude with me here in the building. Sometimes I am my own worst enemy and I can't blame it on nobody else. And yeah, you're always going to have some folk who are, who are not going to be able to see what you see. You're going to have some folk who are not going to be able to receive your dream. You're going to have some folk who are always Brother Damon going to see you for the little rug rat you used to be. You're always going to have some folk who are going to doubt you but listen, you got to be careful. You can't allow that uh, to get into your spirit uh, and then hinder you from being what God has called you to be. Uh, somebody ought to say, God didn't save me uh, for me not to do good things. God didn't save me for me not to accomplish great things. God didn't save me for me to just be mediocre. No, God saved me so that I can give him glory and so that I can have a testimony and so that I I can be a blessing to somebody else. Uh, look at somebody and say, don't stop now. Don't stop now. Uh, sometimes we can be our own worst enemy. Sometimes it is us that is getting in our own way. And yeah, we blame it on everybody else. <laughs> uh, we put it on everybody else. Well, you know the reason I didn't do it was because they said, well, uh, they always going to say, well, you know the reason I didn't do it was because nobody would, would believe in me. Well, you know what? Uh, everybody ain't going to believe in you. Uh, well, the reason I didn't do it was because, you know what? They wouldn't just let me live down what I used to be. Well, the best way to get back at folk who won't let you to live down what you used to be is you getting up and doing something amazing right now. You got to get out of your own way. 
Somebody say he's preaching in here. And so therefore, when we think about keeping our momentum and making the statement, don't stop now. What the writer of Hebrews do in chapter 12, what he does is uses Jesus as an example unto us as one who said, I'm not stopping now. Understanding that Jesus had a purpose. That when he came upon the earth, he came and left his seat in divinity. He put on the flesh. He was still deity. He was still God in the flesh. He had a kingdom plan. And that kingdom plan was to come and set the captives free. It was a kingdom plan to come and to heal. It was a kingdom plan to come and cast out demons. It was a kingdom plan to come and establish God's kingdom here on earth. It was a kingdom plan of your salvation, of your redemption, of your deliverance, of your liberation. It was God's kingdom plan. Matter of fact, he mentioned many a times, I'm about my father's business. Uh, uh, he had obstacles. He had barriers up against him. Last week, if you heard my sermon, if you didn't go to YouTube or Facebook and watch it, you will understand that he always had a threat around him. There were chief priests and elders and, uh, and there was uh, the Sanhedrin and the Pharisees that was always trying to come against uh, the plan of God that God had for his life. But in the midst of all the struggle, because he understood that he had to go to the cross and going to the cross was not an easy thing. Going to the cross it would seem it would be such a struggle that it would stop his momentum. Going to the cross was difficult. Not only going to the cross but hanging on the cross was hard. You would think hanging on the cross would stop him. Uh, uh, it was a hard thing to do. As a matter of fact then he would die on the cross. You would think death would stop his momentum, but death did not stop his momentum. He would then go down into hell and he would preach the captives. See, you would think him going down into hell would stop his momentum. The devil would think that I got him now, ah, but going into hell did not stop his momentum. But listen, it then gives an example that on the third day, he rose with all power in his hands. You would think that, you know what? There was no way he was going to get up. After three days, he gets up with all power in his hands. It don't stop there. He then 40 days later ascends into heaven and he's sitting at the right hand of the Father. Why? Because he would not let anything stop him uh, and stop his momentum. Uh, and so I'm here this morning to let somebody know that in the text the writer gives us an example of Jesus Christ and what he had to endure in order to accomplish God's will. You ought to say to yourself I'm not stopping now. I've got some trouble but I'm not going to stop I've got some struggles. I'm not going to stop. I've got some hardship. I'm not going to stop. I've got to go through some pain. I'm not going to stop. Everything is not always going to work out like I want it, but I'm not going to stop. It may seem at times that my vision is fading, but I'm not going to stop. It may seem as if my dreams are not coming to pass. I'm not going to stop. It may seem i got to go all by myself, but I'm not going to stop. It may seem people are doubting me, but I'm not going to stop. Matter of fact, some are talking me down, but I'm not going to stop. Others may not see it, but I'm not going to stop. Nobody believes in me, but I'm not going to stop to think about where I came from and to see what God is doing now. I'm not going to stop. I'm going to keep on pressing. But listen, I'm going to give you three things real quick that shows you what you need to do to make sure you don't stop. It's right here in the text. Verse number one, the first thing when I say don't stop now and make maintain your momentum may that you catch this you gotta throw off the sin that will slow you down <laughs> okay okay let me say that again because I got a few note takers in here uh, when I say don't stop now I realize that I gotta throw off the sin that will slow me down. Look at the text because y'all looking at me real mad. I'm just giving you the word. Catch this. Look at what he says. He says, therefore, we are surrounded by a crowd of great witnesses who by faith have testified to the truth of God's absolute faithfulness. He says this. Catch this. He says, stripping off every unnecessary weight <laughs> in the sin which so easily and cleverly entangles us. Uh, look at your name and say, I gotta, I gotta shake off this stuff. I gotta shake this stuff up. I gotta throw off the sin. First thing he says is the weight. Now understand this. This weight uh, in the text is speaking of forgiveness. Uh, uh, 
unforgiveness. Uh, see, too often times, one of the threats of our momentum in going forward is unforgiveness. <laughs> okay, see, y'all don't want to see y'all not ready to get over it yet. <laughs> uh, see, y'all not ready to y'all not ready to leave it yet. Because <laughs> uh, y'all looking at me talking about pastor. Uh, yeah, it's a wait, but you don't know what they did to me. You don't know what they said to me, uh, pastor. You don't know how it went down, pastor. You don't you don't know you don't know the abuse I went through, uh, uh, pastor. You don't know how they talked about me, my mama, my daddy, and yes, they went there. How they talked about my grandma. You, uh, you know, you don't you don't know the struggle. Though. This wait, this wait. He says, first thing you got to do is that you got to get rid of the wheat of unforgiveness. Don't you know unforgiveness will make you sick? Okay, don't you know that unforgiveness in you, the matter of fact, some folk had moved on and moved away and you still walking around and they, they, they prospering and driving the car you want to drive in, live in the neighborhood you want to live in, got the money you want and you walking around talking about I'll never get over what they did to me and you looking all sick, you looking all sad, you still struggling to y'all quiet on me. You ought to look at your neighbor and say, I got to get rid of this weight some stuff I gotta let go and move for. You can't keep momentum going and you're still hanging on to the weight and the burden of unforgiveness. No, baby, let it go. Matter of fact, Teddy Pendergrass says, I think you better let it go. This looks like another TKO because what would happen if you hold on to the weight of unforgiveness, you will not be able to keep it going. But then catch this, look at the text. He says, Says, but then also, he says, get, you gotta, you gotta get rid uh, of throw off the sin uh, that is uh, still upon you. Why? Because the enemy is always sitting back. Uh, and the Bible says in the Genesis uh, that he was more clever than he was uh, than the others. He was sitting back seeing how he can stop your momentum. He's sitting back seeing what he can do uh, to stop your momentum. How he can come up against you. What he can use against you. Not if it's not the weight of unforgiveness or the burden of unforgiveness then he says I want to use the sin. Okay see so y'all quiet now. See some of the things that hinder us from walking in positive momentum is the sin that we continue to deal with. See, see, see the problem with us is see that we don't want to walk and live in holiness and in righteousness. We want God to bless our mess. Yeah God I might be messing up, but God, you know my heart. God, you know I, I struggle with this, uh, but you know my heart. God, you 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 know how you know my heart. You you know I want to give this up, uh, but 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 God, you can just bless me anyhow. He's very clear. He says the reason, the reason why Jesus was able to go all the way to the cross, uh, and the reason why he was able to overcome death, hell, and the grave, uh, because he did not sin. Uh, and you're saying, well, hold Hold on one second, that's Jesus. Uh, but what I am saying to you is that you've been saved from sin. Uh, you've been delivered from sin. Uh, God, uh, oh, see, you've been freed from sin. You've been liberated from sin. And stop letting the enemy use uh, the sin that you struggle with to hinder you from moving forward. Look at your name and say, I'm not going to stop now. Uh, so whatever it is uh, that I deal with, uh, I got to yield it uh, and give it over to God. I got to throw off that sin. I got to throw off that weight and I got to say, I'm not going to stop now. He says, one, you got to throw off the sin that will slow you down. But then catch this. Uh, the second thing is you got to keep your eyes on the holy prize. Okay, okay, okay. Then I say don't stop now. And I'm talking about my momentum. Not only do I got to throw off the sin, but I got to keep my eye on the holy prize. Look at, look at verse number two. Look at verse number two. He says this. He says, uh, uh, looking, looking away from all that will distract us. Catch this. Focusing our eyes on Jesus. <laughs> okay, see, 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 see. Uh, you missed that. Who is the author and perfecter of our Thing. He says, in instance, if I'm going to keep my momentum, I'm not going to stop. I'm going to keep my eyes on Jesus. And some of y'all say, well, you know what? That's, that's just, you know, I, I know that. Mm, uh, uh, do you really know that? Uh, see, the real fact of the matter is, is that we, at times, we allow things to muddy our vision. 
Oh, boy. I see y'all, see y'all, see y'all. Chat back at me right now and say, Pastor, you right on my street because those in here don't want to be real. At times, we lose sight of the whole thing. See, he says, in instance, I'm going to keep my eyes on the one who is the perfecter of my faith. Okay, catch this. The more I keep my eyes on Jesus, the more I realize that I have the strength to continue to go on. The more I keep my eyes on Jesus, the more I realize that I have the power to keep it moving. The more I keep my eyes on Jesus, it's the more I realize that it, God has given me and granted me everything I need in him to keep it going. See, you need to keep your eyes on God and not on the things that are going on around you. He says it very clear. See, the enemy causes chaos and the enemy causes confusion. Come here, Peter, and the disciples the Lord said, you're going to the other side. And the, the, the enemy said, hold on one second. I'm going to cause some distractions to stop their momentum from them going to the other side. I'm going to preach to y'all on Facebook and YouTube. Because, see, I can tell you right now, too often times, the storm of the wind, the storm of the rain, the storms of the waves, the storm of the boat feeling like it's getting ready to tip over seems as if I'm not going to make it. It's going to stop my momentum but understand what Jesus said Jesus gave a prophetic utterance all of them we're going to the other side okay y'all missed the place to shout uh, you ought to look at your neighbor and say neighbor God spoke prophetically over me oh my God God has given me a word and I'm going to keep my eyes on God I'm not going to look at the rain I'm not going to look at the wind I'm not going to look at the waves I'm not going to look at the boat I'm going to go get Jesus and say, Jesus, I need your help right now. Because when I keep my eyes on Jesus, when I'm in a storm, I know who to call on. When I keep my eyes on Jesus, I understand what's trying to work against my momentum to go forward. Look at somebody and say, I'm going to keep my eyes on the holy prize. Whenever I need him, I'm going to call on him. Don't you know that when you call on the name of Jesus. He will open the doors for you. Don't you know that when you call on the name of Jesus he will make a way out of no way. I gotta keep my eyes on the holy pride. Look at your name and say what you're looking at. Oh my God. Come on, come on Facebook. You're the chat. What you're looking at. Don't get distracted by the chaos of the enemy. Don't get distracted by the confusion of the enemy. Don't get distracted distracted by all the elements that's going on around you. Just keep your eyes on Jesus. Okay, hold up, hold up. We got to get out of here. Catch this. I got to throw off the sin. I got to keep my eyes on the holy prize. But then catch this. Lastly, when I say don't stop now, it means this. Uh, that in Jesus, I have what it takes to finish. <laughs> okay, you missed the place right there. Uh, look at somebody that say, I have what it takes. Uh, come on, come on, Facebook. Come on, type it in the chat. I have what it takes. Uh, look, at, look at what he says. Look at what he says. Uh, he says, he says, uh, just consider and meditate on him who endured from sinners such bitter hostility against himself. Uh, now, now, don't you know if they, if they, if they took Jesus to it? <laughs> okay, I'm going to say that again. Uh, Y'all kind of quiet today. Don't you know if they took Jesus to it? Don't you know if they gave him all hell? Don't you know if they if they took Jesus through such what the Bible says bitter hostility? Don't you know they're gonna take you through it? Okay, okay. But listen, catch this. But in Him I have what it takes to finish. Because He finished, I finished. Because He got up, I get up. Because He endured, I endured. Because He persevered, I persevered. Because He got over it, I get over it. Because He moved on, I move on. Okay, I'm getting ready to go home by myself, but I'm going to let you know I'm not going to stop now. I'm going to keep my momentum going because he finished, I can finish. Because he paid the price, I know it's already paid and done. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, 
Hold on one second. I need to make sure Cedric has a neighbor. You got a neighbor? Uh, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, uh, if God finished, I can finish. Okay, y'all missed the place to shout. Uh, look at somebody and say, I'm getting ready to go and I'm getting ready to come out on the other side. Who am I talking to right now? Who am I speaking to right now? Can I talk like a prophet right now? You getting ready to go to the other side. Oh, come on, come on. I'm talking to somebody. Brittany, you getting ready to go to the next level. Kimberly, you getting ready to go to where God has purposed you. Brother Damien, that business is getting ready to go to million dollar status. Oh, who can I'm talking to? Mother Christine, you getting ready to go to be the mother, to be the prophet, to be the missionary, to be the evangelist, to be the encourager of your family. Mother is gone, but you are rising up. Oh my God, who am I talking to? Who is it that I need to speak to? Brother Quincy, God is getting ready to exalt you. Brother, you get ready to go to another level. Uh, can I talk to somebody uh, on Facebook? Uh, I don't know who I'm talking to, uh, but I'm telling you right now, uh, don't stop now. Uh, come on, Ashley. Uh, you're in Houston uh, for a reason. Uh, but God is taking you to a whole nother level. He's taking you to a whole new place. Who am I preaching to? Is there anybody here who says I'm willing to admit that I'm not going to stop? I'm not giving up. And I'm not giving in. Come here, Brother Kenny. You getting ready to accomplish some great things. Put your mind to it. Put your heart to it. Stop playing with it and go forward and don't stop. Nah. Come here, Tanya. It is so what it is that God spoke over your life and in your family. It is so. In Jesus' name, don't stop now. I feel the, I feel the Holy Ghost. Keep preaching. Keep moving. Keep trusting. Keep obeying. I feel like running. Come here. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. I'm not going to stop. This isn't it. I got more to do. This isn't it. I got a whole new level. This isn't it. I got more people. This isn't it. There's some more territory. This isn't it. I can't stop. I won't stop. I trust you, Lord. I throw off every sin, every weight. My eyes is on the prize. I got you. I see you. Jesus, the old saints would say, I am lifted up. And your train is still in the temple. Who shall you send? Send me. Me. I won't stop. I won't stop. I gotta keep it going. Don't stop now. Don't stop now. Don't stop now. Don't stop. And I'm here to encourage somebody right now. I want you to hear me. Hear me in your spirit. Hear me in your mind. Hear me in your soul. You have what it takes, Felicia, to finish because of what Jesus already did for you. You already have what it takes. Throw off every bit of sin. God ain't in the business of blessing your mess. God is in the business of elevating those who are righteous. And no matter what goes on around, all around you, I need you to keep your eyes on the holy prize, Jesus. Because the enemy, <laughs> he operates in chaos. And if you allow yourself to get caught up in the chaos around you, 
you will be swirling too. Meaning you won't get all caught up. I got to keep my eyes on you. And when I feel weak, Josina, hear me. When I feel like I can't make it, feel like I can't go another step, and I feel like I want to stop because of the bitter hostility. <laughs> I have to believe I have what it takes because of him. Who I'm talking to. I don't know who I'm talking to. I gotta, oh man, I gotta, I gotta close out and then we're gonna do something. Huh? Mm. Facebook, don't stop now. I don't know who I'm talking to out there. But you got momentum. You, you don't stop now. Don't stop now. Because God is taking you somewhere. And listen, can I, I'm going to help somebody. I'm, I'm, I'm really finished. I'm really finished. You're not trying to figure it out. Okay? All right? You're not trying to figure this out. God has already given you the vision. Can, I, can we help somebody now? All right? I want you to stop playing around. I'm trying to search. I'm trying to hear from the Lord. I'm, you know, I'm praying. No, the Bible declares I know the plans that I have for you even before you was in your mother's womb. If you're still trying to figure it out, that is the enemy. That's the devil. And that is you not having self-belief in what God wants to do in you. Because the Bible says God is not the author of confusion, but of love, power, and a sound mind. You still playing around talking about I'm trying to figure it out. No! Throw that sin off you! I'm trying to help somebody. Y'all don't want me to help you. Throw that sin off you. That confusion is sin. No. No, God has the plan for you. And let me help somebody this morning. Don't stop now because of this. Catch this. I want you to hear me with this. See, the enemy has been distracting you by the sin he's been able to entangle you in. I don't know who I'm talking to, but you've been delivered from that. You've been healed. You've been set free. You've been liberated. And you got to walk in the holiness of God, in the righteousness of God. Stop trying to be complacent. Stop playing. You heard me say a couple of weeks ago in my sermon. See, we play with the devil. No, he ain't no one to play with. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. To stop your momentum. They mad at me. I got to go. For those who are here, stand with me. There's somebody right now who's joining us, whether in, in sanctuary or virtually, and says, you know what, Pastor? I, I do got to stop. And what I first got to stop is living according to my flesh because the wages of that sin is death. And I don't want to die before I accomplish what it is that God has for me. And today, I want to know Jesus as my Lord and Savior of my life. Today, I want to come. I'm going to come to him. And today, I want to pray the prayer of salvation. I've never prayed this prayer before, but today I want to receive the Lord Jesus as my Lord. If that's you, you want to pray this prayer for the first time in your life, I want you to pray this with me. Heavenly Father, I've sinned against you. I want forgiveness of my sin. I repent of my wicked ways. Heavenly Father, I believe you sent your son Jesus to die for me. I believe he rose for me. I believe he ascended for me. And I believe he's sitting at the right hand of the Father making intercession for me. Today, Lord. I want to receive you as my Lord, as my Savior. And today I give you my heart. And today as I have confessed with my mouth and today as I believe in my heart, today, God, I say yes to you. And I say yes to receiving you as my Lord and Savior. And I seal my salvation by saying amen. And I seal me receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit by saying amen. 
And I give the benediction to my salvation by saying amen. And today, you are my Savior, you are my Lord. Today, God, oh, thank you, Lord, because I'm not stopping now. I'm going to keep with this momentum. I'm going to grow and mature in my relationship with you. And today, I can believe today that I am a child of the Most High God. I want you to do something. If you're that person, you prayed that prayer for the first time to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life. I want you to do something. They got it up on the screen. I want you to call the church office, 704-392-0522. Let me pray with you. Let me affirm to you that what you've done today is, <coughs> is real. And your relationship is real. There may be somebody who says, who's joining us virtually and says, you know what, Pastor? You've been blessing me. I mean, this Don't Lose Your Momentum series has, I mean, blessed me. Matter of fact, I've been joining on Wednesday night. Love thy neighbor as myself has been a blessing to me. And I'm telling you right now, I'm telling you right now, I just want, I need a church home. I need a place that I can fellowship. I need a pastor to call my own. I, I need a pastor who will cover me, who will pray for me, who will counsel me, who will preach to me, who will teach to me, who will love me, who will allow me to exercise my gift as a part of the kingdom of God. I don't live in Charlotte. You don't have to. We're a hybrid ministry. Everything we offer <laughs> in person, we offer virtually, and you can be connected to us and be as much a part of who we are and what we do as anyone else. If that's you, call the church office, 704-392-0522. Uh, don't stop. Maintain your momentum. Don't lose your momentum. Throw off all the sin and the weight that will try to stop you. Keep your eyes on the holy prize of Jesus and know that God has given you everything you need to finish. <laughs> May God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. And may the love of God, the grace of the Holy Spirit, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. We seal this and say, yes, Lord, and amen. Amen. But real quick, real quick, real quick. I don't know who I was talking to today because we're off camera, right? Okay, okay, amen, amen. I want you to, you got some momentum. God has been building some momentum over these four, six, four weeks, five weeks series. Even Mashonda's sermon uh, was a part of what God was doing. I just want you to lift your hand right where you are. Because I want to pray over you. I, you. I just wanted you to lift your hand. You ain't got to come to the aisle. I, uh, last time I wasn't supposed to do that. But I just want you to lift your hand. You've got, God, there's some momentum. And catch this. Uh, Queen B, momentum isn't tied to age. Because as long as you have breath in your lungs, Reverend Davis, and God can use you.